You know, I think that he needs to take a certain amount of accountability for what he actually did to get him fired. But it's also in regards to Deontay Wilder not having any skills, you know, that kind of plays the same way as well. You know, if Deontay, if if Mark Breland was in a camp for that many years because it was 10, to, Mark Breland was, might, might have been in there in his camp, you know, for 30, over 30 fights. You know, I knew he came in early in his career and he was definitely there during all the championship fights. If Deontay Wilder was not listening, you know, what is it that JD's needs, not, not JD's, but excuse me, um, that Mark Breland needs to do in order to make him listen? That is something that, you know, Mark Breland needs to ask himself because there's been other trainers that have worked with very egotistical uh, fighters before. And that did, and but it didn't keep them from trying to figure out, from figuring out a way to work with them. Up. So once again, those are words from Fanon, as he accuses Mark Breland of having credibility of himself. He's basically saying you should look in the mirror, like look at what point should you, uh, should you take accountability on not training Deontay Wilder. And maybe if you, maybe you should have found a way to train Deontay Wilder. Well, I like what Fanon said because I don't know if he really meant to, but he called Deontay Wilder egotistical. Yeah, he is egotistical. Okay, he does have a big fucking ego and it's too big. But when you do have that, there's nothing you can do. When you're telling someone, hey, with, with power, you don't need skill. And then you hear Mark Breland saying, hey, the man don't have skill. How you going to be mad at fucking Mark Breland? Counterpunch. How are you pissed off at Mark Breland? What Mark Breland said when the guy himself said, hey, with power, you don't need skill. What? So you think that's going to educate him, motivate him to train harder? He didn't want to train at all. He said it himself. He didn't want to train. He said, I don't like to train. I got away with a lot of shit in my camp. But later on, it was revealed how and why he got away with a lot of things. You know who enabled him? J.D.'s. J.D.'s was the guy, in fact, was telling Mark Breland, hey, he doesn't feel like doing this today, so don't make him. That's enabling so you're telling you, so your boss telling you, the head trainer is telling the guy that really knows what's going on, Mark Breland. JD's is telling Mark Breland, like, hey, you can't do that today. You know, he doesn't feel like doing that today. You know, so at some point, you're like, hey, do I fucking get the money and do what I'm only allowed to do, or do I leave out of credibility? He picked the latter, he picked the money. But that don't stop him from, hey, well, shit, I tried to train him, but they told me that I really couldn't when I really wanted to. So since I couldn't, I'm not going to get fired because I like the money that it's bringing in. So guess what? I stayed in my lane. I stayed in my lane and Deontay Wilder paid for it. That's exactly what happened. So you can't get mad at Mark Breland for saying that, hey, he ain't got no skills. You know, he can't. He, he won't listen when he didn't. He admitted he didn't really have skills like that. He has athleticism, power, speed you know, durability, but that doesn't mean you have fucking skills. Okay. <laughs> Those are just physical attributes of yourself. Not something that someone's training you to do. Okay. So at some point, if don't get mad at Mark Breland, if he says Deontay Wilder has no skills and then turn around and say, well, Hey, and you don't get mad at Deontay Wilder for saying, Hey, I fired him because he threw in the towel. Oh yeah. I think he spiked my water. So you, it's tit for tat, basically. Okay, this is what it is. Mark Breland's words, Deontay Wilder's thoughts and words. So these guys are talking. Okay, so this is a Cold War beef between the two. Let's continue. Big, real big example of that is um, Muhammad Ali and Angelo Dundee, where Muhammad Ali, early on in his career, was working with Archie Moore, and Archie Moore was saying how difficult it was to get the uh, Muhammad Ali to do the things that he wanted him to do, right? And where Muhammad Ali had a you know a vision about how he wanted to fight, and he was very very stubborn. 
and, and refusing to listen to Archie Moore. Well, Archie Moore left his camp and then he wound up going with Angelo Dundee. And Angelo Dundee figured out that, encountered the same problem with Muhammad Ali and was like, hey, I got to figure out a way to work with this big ego. And what he did was he made everything seem that it was his idea. He made it seem like it was the, that it was Muhammad Ali's idea or something like, for example, if he said that he was really snapping out the jab, he's like, oh, man, I really like how you're snapping that jab out. And then Muhammad Ali or Cassius Clay early in his career would say, oh, yeah, OK, cool. Yeah, yeah, I am snapping the jab out. And he would start snapping the jab out more. So there's different ways to deal with, you know, difficult people. And if you're not able as a trainer to work around, you know, and get your fighter to actually listen to you, then that is, you know, then that is a problem with you as much as it is the fighter. Okay, we heard a mouthful on that one. There they go. Every time I talk about boxing, someone wants to. <laughs> You're trying to compare Muhammad Ali to Deontay Wilder. Well, look, let's stop. For one, Muhammad Ali's career is done. And based on what Wilder's done versus what, Deon what Muhammad Ali did, there's no comparison. It's just not. Okay? Um, you can say what you want about that. I mean, he, he has of yet. We will see because his, his career is not over. However... They're talking about Muhammad Ali, what he does. It's not, Muhammad Ali was a gold Olympian, so he knew how to fight. It's just certain things and certain habits he didn't want to do, so you can't compare them. That's different from getting someone to do road work, strength and conditioning, you know what I mean? Overall uh, routines that you need in the gym. If that guy doesn't want to listen to you, that's what it is. But what Fanon is saying is, hey, well, it's actually... Uh, his fault because he should have been in a situation or put himself in a situation where he could translate to Deontay Wilder to get him to do what he wanted to do. Well, it's hard to do that, of course, like I uh, talked about in the other video. This is the continuation that a uh, head trainer is telling you not to do certain things. OK, that was what was revealed to me where I uh, interviewed my, uh, Anthony Breland. And that's what he was saying that his father was telling him. That, hey, he couldn't do certain things. And if you were trying to think outside the box and still do your job, be overzealous and trying to find ways to help this guy. What about Mark Breland's personality conveyed that? I'm not trying to talk about Mark Breland or whatever, but he's like a passive guy. He's passive. If you talk to him, yeah, well, you, know, I, 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 you know what I mean? He's not, he's not Muhammad Ali. He ain't Deontay Wilder. What I saw, I saw a very aggressive guy within Deontay Wilder d talking to a very passive guy. Very passive, uh, very educated, very skilled trainer trying to talk to a guy that's boisterous. Like he said, very difficult. Fanon said that. I didn't say that. So he's admitting Deontay Wilder was difficult, egotistical. Those are the words that he's explaining the guy that he supports. Okay? So, I mean, there's no, you know, sugarcoating that. That's what he said. Not what I said. But I do agree. Especially if he wouldn't want him to train. This is my counterpunch, right? If Deontay Wilder would have opened up his brain or, his, uh, or the con perception, the concept and the desire to... Train like he's training now. Maybe he wouldn't be in this position now. So overall, you can't play. You can't blame the trainer when the fighter is reluctant. Like I don't blame Manny Robles for Andy Ruiz coming in fucking three hundred pounds. You can't do that. But Manny's like hey, Manny ain't gonna quit his job. He ain't gonna stop his profession because a fighter or the pupil ain't doing what he's supposed to do. He's training them. He's teaching them, or he's trying to. All you can do is try. And that's what I believe Mark Breland did. I don't think that he's bitter. I just think that he's calling it the way it is. It's everything said and done. That's water under the bridge. Wilder got whooped. What, is he that pissed off about it? He did the right thing. He can sleep at night. So it is, it's all right. But anyway, you guys tell me what you think about this particular video. Of course, please subscribe. And you guys been counterpunch. Peace.